Hi guys, I recently had a question on uh, how to do the floor decal here. Um, that lock on floor decal that we have. It's the blue butterfly underneath this uh, enemy here. It um, used to be red, but I've changed it since then. But still the, the same general idea on how to go, do, go about it is the same. And it stays on the ground even when the enemy's in the air there. Um, so basically I'll show you how to go about making one of those, or at least how I went about it. Um, there's some benefits to how I do it and some negatives to how I do it, and I'll go over those as well. So we'll start quickly with a uh, with what material I have. It's just a translucent unlit material for me, and I have it under two sided as well. Um, I may not need that or not, but I don't feel like figuring out what side I'm supposed to have it on. Um, it's just a time, a sign node, bump offset, um, and then it's it's just a uh, it's just really just bouncing up and down here. This, uh, this floor decal. Turn it on, man. There we go. Um, and it's also got a rotator on it, so it's just moving. Just something to kind of catch the eye. From here, this this just goes right into uh, this just goes right into the emissive, and this just goes right into the uh, opaque and see because it's just a, a white image on top of black. So so I can just go opaque right on it, and that's just so we can't see the the actual square that it's on, and that's exactly what it's on. In fact, um, I'm I'm using a static mesh actor here. This lock decal. It's just the shape plane that actually comes inside the engine. You'll be able to find it. I actually use it quite a bit, to tell you the truth. And because it's opaque, you can't really see the shape plane. You know, so uh, so all you're going to see is the butterfly. Um, and you'll probably be able to just set it to visible because you'll be spawning, or at least how I go about it here is a blueprint actor. Um, I have it on a blueprint actor floor decal. Um, and you're spawning in it, and it, it, you'll probably, when you spawn it, it'll just be visible anyway, so you don't have to really worry about um, turning this on and off. I have two in here, so that actually complicates things a little bit for me, because sometimes one's on when the other one's not on, and they could turn on while the other one's on, so, so I go about that using visibility, so that's why this one starts off. In case the other one turned on, that's why I've spawned this actor. Um, I'm only going to go through the one. Um, but I just I, I did it so that I can uh, just use the one time that's going to trace down over and over again rather than uh, using this this trace multiple times. Um, I was just trying to to save a little bit I guess. Um, so what we're going to do? I'm going to set up a, a custom event in that blueprint floor decal. Um, for me, it's just setting up lock decal, and I let you choose whether or not. The lock decal is to turn on or to turn off when you call that in the first place. And to do that, you just hit one of these new boolean and then set whatever it is. And sure enough, when we call lock decal right here, you get to check whether or not it's on or off. Or you could, you know, do something like uh, this one is getting set here in the, in the enemy blueprint to on, and I can just drag that straight to here and it'll just automatically turn it on or off, whatever the, the last, whatever this one's set to. Um, from there we're going to set the, the boolean is lock decal on, and then this is where I have to do visibility. Um, you may not need to do that once again, but if you do end up using two things in your decal, your floor decal or something that's going to trace underneath the, the enemy over and over again, then you need to do something probably like this. Um, so I set it to on. Also, I have a do once, so only one time it'll it'll come through here and start this this loop basically because it's just looping over and over again. Um, to set that up or to turn this on or spawn this actor, I guess I should say, um, to show what I do here. When Alice locks onto him, she calls this event in the the enemy blueprint, and then from there they'll tell themselves that they're the lock target. That's true. That they're the lock target. So I set that here. Um, this is so that their color kind of, you know, fades up and down so you can see them a little more clearly. And this is where I see, is a floor decal already active? Was it set somewhere else in that, that other part of the decal that I have? And if it is, all we do is we just turn it on. And then if it isn't, then we need to create it. Uh, once again, you probably won't need to do this. You could just have a floor decal. You just go straight from, from setting this or something straight into spawning the, the decal actor. And in that spawn a decal actor, is going to um, pick which class. Obviously, it's going to be decal actor. You just pick your transform. I just use the actor's transform. It doesn't really matter because I'll be setting that in a second. 
it's fine, even if colliding. And more important is this one right here, enemy actor. I need to know who is the person. I mean, even though they have an instigator here, and I probably could use that, but still, enemy actor, I'm setting it myself. And that's just a boolean, I mean, a, a variable I set right here. Enemy actor, two actor, and more importantly, I did expose on spawn. You just check that to be true. And this way, when you spawn that actor, this will pop right up. And you'll just take, you know, yourself here and plug it right into there. And this way it knows who's actually calling this. From there, I set the floor decal actor. And this is just inside the enemy blueprint. You may not need one of those. It's just so I can cast from it kind of quickly. And then I'm just basically casting it from there and, and calling the lock decal to be true. Um, and once again, Alice is the one who's calling this whenever she locks on. Just like when she locks off, she'll be calling this one instead, and then it becomes false. And sure enough, once again, I could just plug that right into there. Um, and it'll tell the, the floor decal to be false this time. So when we're locking off, it'll be there. But anyways, assuming that it's true. And we're coming through here. We set the visibility. Once again, you may not need to do that. And basically, you'll go all the way down to here, and we're going to line trace exactly as one would expect over and over and over again. Um, we got the enemy actor. Once again, we set that when we spawned it. Um, and we're going to get that actor location. I break that vector, and we go down in Z by 5,000 unreal units. And that's just to kind of have that trace shooting down over and over and over again to try and find the ground. Um, also, I make an array here and do the actors to ignore, just pull off and make an array and then just plug that in there. Um, and that's really just so it ignores itself, even though 99% of the time I can't find any reason why it would hit itself since we're only looking for world static, which is the same thing here with the ignore self. It's 99% of the time why would it hit itself because it's, it's ignore stat, I mean world static. And um, so that's the start is from there. The end is 5,000 units underneath from the actor location or from the enemy's location. And we're only looking for world static because all my floors in my game are going to be made out of world static. So that won't be too big of a problem. From there we're going to see, have we hit something? If we have not, for some odd reason my enemy is more than 5,000 other units in the air, likely. Um, then we're going to wait 0.05 seconds. We're going to come up here, we're going to make sure that this is still on. Once again, we can ignore the, the other decal I have here. It's just an or, if we need more than one. Um, I would make sure that this is still on, and as long as it's still on, we're going to trace down again, and we're going to do that over and over again every 0.05 seconds until we you know, hit something. When we do hit something, we're just going to break the hit result. I'm, I get the impact point, I break the vector, and I add 5 um, under units. And this is only to uh, get over the Z buff fighting. That's when those hatch lines basically happen when it's trying to figure out which one to draw, because they're kind of on the same, same plane there. And then I set that new location. So I set the decal mesh, set the world location rotation. So I set that at the location of where this plane should be. I also get the impact normal, and I get the rotation from the X vector. I break it, and I do the minus 90, and that's only so because that, that plane was coming in like it was a shield for my enemies, um, rather than sitting you know, horizontal on the floor, basically. So I had to do the, the minus 90 on the rotation and set the new rotation right there. And this is so if, if the guy's on a slope it will be at the same angle as a slope and I can show that off in a second here. Um, from there it comes off and it does the 0.05 weight and make sure it's on and then it just does this over and over and over and over again every 0.05. Um, I will mention right now I have not looked into whether or not delays are better or worse than timers. Um, so you may want to just set up a timer that when you spawn basically just every 0.05 seconds it's just asking this question until so the timer will just constantly go through here um, in which then the false would just go to nothing and, and this would just go to nothing um, and the timer would just go off every 0.05 seconds. I don't know if that's better or using a delay is better. Um, so just mentioning it if you end up finding out that it's better if someone wants to put that up on the forums um, if I ever find out, I'll, I'll update the video. Um, well, no, I won't update the video, but I'll update the comments in the video. Um, and we just do that until this is this is false. Um, when that's false, that means that we were locked off. Alice calls the lock off. We turn that uh, false. 
and we call floor decal and we tell it to turn it to false as well which is going to come up right here so this would it's set as false lock decal is not on anymore and when that's false I have to cast to my enemy and, and I set the floor decal to nothing just to guarantee it there's nothing there it no longer is looking for something that that's going to get destroyed here in one second um, you probably can do this in your enemy blueprint um, so right here you could just set it to to nothing yourself rather than having to cast. I only have to do that just because once again I have two different ones so I don't know whether or not I, I can destroy it yet or set it to false yet. Um, I need to check both of those variables and this one's doing it already so I, I have it here. And then we just simply destroy yourself. Um, it's pretty much that simple. Um, shouldn't be that big of an issue here. Um, we'll test it out here again. Show it off one more time. <clears throat> I also have slowed down this enemy a little bit, so uh, it'll be a little easier to track. You won't chase me too fast here. And that's that's it right there. You can see the line trace those and those red lines. Um, right there, you can see that it's actually it's coming up on the angle. Uh, I just got hit. Uh, right there, you can see that it, that it does go on the normal, but you can also see the problem with me using a static mesh. So this is the limitations of it all, and that's if you look at the floor that the the wing is getting clipped in the floor because that static mesh is going inside the floor, and that's the limitations of using the static mesh that I'm using. Um, and the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm running the problems with going about it with the regular way, which would be to um, use that right there, which is a decal. The decal. Is on the ground here, um, and they they'll go at angles and they'll do stuff like that where it's going around the corner a little bit. So um, and whereas the static mesh, it would just be still hovering here in space when it hits a corner, whereas the decal it just doesn't draw it in space. So a decal is pretty good, but I've I've run into problems with decals where they they wouldn't uh, show up in <laughs> they wouldn't show up in the uh, in the shadows. And then also when you turn on the experimental from time to time they don't draw always correctly. So I'm definitely running into problems with decal, that's why I end up going with a static mesh, but I'm sure you can go about it however you want. And if you did want to do something um, with a decal, you basically just have to set that up, uh, defer decal right there, um, instead of using a, a surface material. Um, that would do it, so it's really up to you on how you want to do the materials. Basically the idea is still going to be the same, just line trace down and wherever you hit, break the normal and it'll be fine. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, that'll do it for me. Thank you.